Now, why is liberal Zionism so dangerous? Because actually the only existing narratives are the Zionist narrative and the Palestinian narrative. And they're very clear. The Zionist narrative that says this is a land for one and only one people, this is an ethnic supremacist land, etc. And the Palestinian narrative, which are the indigenous people to the land and they have their rights and they demand their rights. And in this, in the middle, another form of narrative kind of cropped up, which acts as a buffer, as a psychological buff buffer for, pe from, for people to, to block people from transitioning from Zionism into humanism. Mm. And that, that psychological buffer is the entirety of the liberal Zionist discourse. As I said, every article that you may have read on Halet's newspaper is that. Anytime that they use terms like Israel and Palestine, meaning two different entities, that is a lie. That is an act of Zionist propaganda. Israel and Palestine are the exact same spot of land. One was built at the expense of the other on top of the other and the expense of its indigenous people. Anytime that they use the term Israeli democracy, anytime that they uh, refer to Israel as a, as a Jewish state, anytime that they use the term the um, Israeli left, anytime, I mean, I can go on and on giving you all these examples when they talk about 50 years of occupation. No, there's no 50 years of occupation. Even technically speaking, they are so dishonest that even technically speaking, there was only one year between 1966 to 1967 when there was no military rule on that land since the foundation of the state of Israel. Because mm. those who were Palestinian citizens of Israel, those inside 48 were under military rule until 66, then that ended and the next year, uh, the occupation transitioned to the West Bank and Gaza. So, so, but for them, it is inconvenient to regard the entirety of the military occupation over Palestinians. It is much more convenient for them to speak about the situation there, which is very bad, but here, they paint a wonderful rosy picture of Israeli democracy. That is an absolute lie. Mm -hmm. I totally negate any use of terms like Israel democracy or saying Israel and Palestine referring to two different entities where in fact they are one and the same. Also, mm -hmm. when we talk about the numbers, maybe that's another important issue. If I don't know how much time we have, but I will share with you another slide quickly. You need to wrap up soon. <laughs> okay. So, okay. The audience can screenshot that quickly. <clears throat> I, I uh, created this uh, table in, exactly in order to, to counter the liberal Zionist uh, propaganda that to counter some article in 972 magazine. But basically, um, this, these are the numbers as far as I know them about the sons and daughters, and daughters of the land. At the top, you have the privileged group, those who have an Israeli citizenship and Jewish nationality, as we mentioned before, as I gave the example before. And there's roughly 7 million of us, okay? And then you have another two thirds of the population. So, okay, so 7 million are the privileged. And then there's another roughly 12 million Palestinians who are in different types of, uh, under different types of uh, control, subjugation, domination, etc. So those who are second class citizens, those who are not citizens, but residents of East Jerusalem, um, and their situation is very precarious those who are under military occupation, harsh military occupation in the West Bank and Gaza, and the 6 million who are refugees to this day and deny the right to come back home. All of these, all roughly 20 million people <clears throat> should be taken into account whenever we talk about Israel-Palestine. If we look at any uh, um, subgroup of that, and we, we, we say that this is the entire story, then this is actually uh, in one way or another an act of propaganda. I will, I will accept a discourse that, that deals with all these 20 million people. If we look at less than that, then I will first and foremost ask question, where are the rest? Why didn't you mention the rest? What are you trying to hide here? Yes. Okay. And when we look at it in that way, it is crystal clear that there's apartheid. There's no question about it. The only that apartheid has different manifestations depending or different aspects depending on where you look. Some people are subjugated second class citizens. They have one version, they live under one version of Israeli apartheid. And then you have people in the West Bank which are under a different version in Gaza and East Jerusalem and the refugees. Even in, on the same territory, you have different uh, aspects of apartheid. So, so it is a very sophisticated form of apartheid, but nonetheless, it is apartheid. When we talk about apartheid, there used to be in South Africa, there used to be petty apartheid and grand apartheid. We have mm -hmm. less of the petty apartheid aspects. We don't have segregated restaurants, segregated schools, etc. 
But the grand apartheid, the overarching apartheid that, that, that is there first and foremost to maintain ethnic domination of one group at the expense of others, that's what it is all about. That's yes. everything the Zionist project is about. And, and, your, and your fight with, with this apartheid system in Israel is against those who, who are very explicit in their sport in, in their support and also people who are implicit. I mean, I, I found this analogy of the apartheid cliff very interesting because, uh, you know, kind of this, this liberal Zionist left is saying you're pushing us towards this, this apartheid cliff. But actually, um, I mean, firstly, they're not acknowledging that it's always been apartheid. Um, Israel and its, and its character has always been uh, apartheid since 48, as you shared. Um, but it, it, it seems like it's more, of, it's more of a Zionist cliff. It's more of this existential jumping off of, you know, this, this brainwashing that, that they've been raised with. So, I mean, I find that very interesting and I think very helpful for our viewers to understand what it's like, um, you know, uh, as someone who fights against these various fronts of apartheid, um, what, what it's like to kind of deal with understanding and how do we, how, how do we challenge these people in their own ways to, to understand the, just how wrong apartheid is in all of its petty and grand manifestations. Uh, so thank you very much, Toda, you know, uh, for, for sharing that, uh, Ronnie.